Hey everyone, so I'm doing a video on a TV and many of you who are long-term subscribers know that uh, I've been building out my media environment in my home for a while now, buying different products to just kind of have media sound really good, look really good and be accessible quickly in, in, in a centralized spot. So uh, my final component or one, I think it's my final component that I that I wanted was the TV, and that was the core core piece of the environment. I had a an, an okay TV in the past. It was only 1080i, and it was smaller in size, and I have some more room I can use now. So I wanted to get a bigger TV, and um, you know, I, I I'll do another video on my kind of my buying criteria and my decision and all the research I had done to select this one. But I'll just say for now that I spent over 12 months researching which TV to buy. Um, for a variety of reasons, <clears throat> I had very, well, I had to, I did have very specific criteria. Main one was picture quality and then price, of course, uh, the kind of the picture quality to price ratio. And I ended up with unexpectedly uh, this Sharp TV. Um, I really wanted a 60 inch to 65 inch in size LCD. Uh, didn't want plasma. This happens to be a 70 inch sharp and uh, I got I was just you know I wasn't going for the 70 inches, but again the price to uh, Kind of the picture quality ratio picture quality to price ratio uh, I ended up with this and uh, Again another video, but be very specific in the model numbers you're looking at if you're considering this TV I think Sharp has four to five of them, depending on how you look at it. I, I know they do. Uh, the the low-end version, the, I think it's the 32 model number versus the 35, it has a distinct difference in picture quality. So, specifically what you're looking at is the Sharp LC-70LE735U. The last set of characters, 735U, are the most important ones there in that that's the specific model number here. It's the 35 uh, version. It's 70 inches of screen. It's LCD. It is, and this is a key point here, look this up, it has backlighting to it. So this model also has uh, 3D capabilities. I didn't get the glasses. I'm not overly wowed by 3D in the first place. I did get to test this. It was, it was okay. It was consistent with other 3D I've seen. To me, it makes me feel a little uncomfortable and I can't really imagine sitting there for two hours or an hour and a half watching a movie with that glasses on my eyes. I don't really like it in the theater either. So this is great. So the price on this thing was, you know, it's 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 a big TV, it has a lot of good features. It's not a it's not a inexpensive TV, but for the size and the price and the features, this is a great price. Um, again, another video. So I wanted to just, just do this real quick and fast today. Uh, the content I'm showing you is actually my video, videos from YouTube stream from Apple TV. So it's what you're seeing on this screen is projected as 720p uh, versus uh, 1080p. So that's just a limitation of Apple TV too. I'm showing you my video because I own the copyright and I didn't want to show anything that uh, you know I don't own so that's why I'm doing this so I will get it started again and let me turn down the volume but I'll just say that quality wise I'm very impressed with uh, the Sharp TV here what what I commonly have found in my research and research online research, research uh, in the store is that <clears throat> some of the TVs out there, the major brands, Samsung, Sony, they suffer with uh, edge edge lighting is the lower method of uh, of uh, lighting in an LED or LCD screen. Uh, so it's edge lighting versus back lighting. The, the edge lighting means the lights are projected from the sides. With that, you can get picture um, uh, inequality in the colors of the screen. You can get light bleed, so light leaking from the sides and top of the of the panel. So uh, uniformity issues are common in, in the screens. There seems to be a lot of quality control, dead pixels. 
that uh, our other brands are having problems with. Uh, visually, when I've been to the store, I've, I've kind of seen there's a lot of pixelation and some distortion in, in pictures. Um, what I found also is that some of the Sonys can suffer from banding. There's certain banding components that are showing up on TVs and haven't seen them quite corrected yet, and many people have been unhappy with those. So I really held off on buying a TV for the longest time, and I happened to come across this one in the in the store, and the picture automatically caught my eye. I could tell this is something different. This is different than what I've seen uh, with some of the other TVs out there, and <clears throat> really, it's it's the backlighting, it's the overall smoothness of the image, and the uh, picture is is uh, very good in all corners of the. TV. There's no banding issues. There's no um, discoloration or pixelation. And some of the deepest of blacks, I've seen uh, some of that uh, with um, sports in the, in the stores. But um, at home, I think the blacks are just amazing. Very amazing compared to the Samsungs. And um, so far, very happy with it. Just hitting some of the features real quickly. It has a simple remote control. It does have 3D on the TV. It does not come with the glasses in most cases unless your store is running a, a deal. As of this video, September 2011, um, where you're going to get the best pricing is actually in local stores. So like Best Buy, for example. Um, so it has a simple menu. It has four i think it's four or five hdmi inputs on back it has two usb ports sharp doesn't do a very good job advertising the features that they have uh, along with the tv the connected applications so um, you can see the menu system there's another video out on youtube that i really helped me learn how to use a sharp menu system uh, before i bought the tv so that was pretty cool um, you can adjust the backlighting contrast sharp uh, sharpness tint all these other things uh, you can, it has connected uh, wireless and an Ethernet port on the back. It does have the N standard, so B, G, and N standard, which is uh, pretty good for a consumer device like this, having the N standard on here already. You can update your firmware, which is pretty easy but a little slow. Uh, what else? You can get onto the Internet directly, which is kind of weird to do on a TV. It is slow and kind of cumbersome to use. You know, I'm not going to do that anyway. Um, power settings, audio, the, the speakers on this thing are going to be 10. There's two on the back. There's 10 watts each. And for the most part, flat screens across the board nowadays, since they're so thin, they're not going to be able to put in big speakers at all. So what most people do is hook them up to your home stereo and have a different, uh, you know, method of uh, projecting sound that way, which is what I'm doing here. Uh, by the way, the sound, the speakers out of the back of the TV, they do sound just fine to me, but if you have a big room, it's not going to be uh, loud enough. Uh, what else can I tell you here? You can also set up a hard drive, USB hard drive that has, is powered and plug it into the back and get videos, pictures, and other different things. It supports a different, uh, a wide variety of formats. You can get out of my video that I'm showing you here, which I think is very good looking still um, and get into the applications built in there's an app button directly on the uh, remote control the sharp tv comes with voodoo netflix cinema now blockbuster alpha lean entertainment napster and then some aquas net is basically their web browser and you can get facebook and twitter on there it's it's okay it's a little cumbersome to me um, you can get a ticker bar at the bottom which is actually was kind of nice, but it's a little uh, slow to use. And what I did like is it has the ability to have DLLNA, Digital Living Room Networking something or other, but it's basically a standard for connecting your TV to your computer system in your house, your network. You can see photos, videos, music. What I do like is that this one seems to be very stable. It's working well. It identified things right away. Um, I have been able to watch my own videos. It sports different formats. Um, I've been able to browse through some of my photos, and I've also uh, 
had much better luck with this DL, DLNA system than I have with the uh, built-in Sony ones. And for, for example, the Blu-ray player I have, Sony seems to get hung up on different uh, on different uh, file formats, and it kind of it can't find certain things. So. Uh, very happy with the connectivity here. I haven't quite figured out how to route my sound back to my home theater when I'm using these web applications so I can get Netflix watching a movie, but if the sound's coming out of the speakers, I need to route it back to my home theater. I'm sure there's a way to do it yet. Do it, I just haven't figured it out yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to, if I can figure it out, to the HDMI home theater port I was using, and there, back to my video. So overall, folks, very happy with the uh, picture quality. There is a little bit of, if you are, have done some reading, there on all the LCD TVs out there right now, it's my opinion that most of them have uh, the soap opera effect. It's kind of an extra sharp depth, a view of depth in your image. And there's ways to reduce it on most all brands. You can reduce it on the sharp here, but it takes some getting used to. It's a different way of looking at uh, your content. And again, and some people call it the soap opera effect. So you're going to find that in most TVs. You can reduce it here a little bit. I don't know. I haven't figured out how to way to remove it completely. Some people like it. Some people don't. So the this TV is about in Here's depth. Here's the thinness of the TV, the depth of it. It's not ultra thin, right? It's not as thin as some of the Sony's or... Samsung's out there, but this is 70 inches of TV, folks. So it's uh, maybe at its widest point, two and a half, three inches, probably three inches if you look at the bottom base down there, which I know you can't see very well. So it weighs uh, 99 pounds with the stand. And uh, so it's not ultra heavy for a TV this size. And uh, it's pretty nice. One thing I found is that um, the bezel of the TV, I love the all black. It looks like the Sony is kind of the monolithic black, but uh, it's the bezel is actually just a little sh more shiny than what I had expected. Um, it would be nice if this would have been a matte finish, kind of instead of a glossy. And I'm specifically talking about the bezel here. It, it seems to pick up fingerprints, um, so I'm sure those can come off easily. But uh, it's it's that's just a hair. If I'm picking on things to pick on, <laughs> the the shiny uh, frame here could be uh, could have been matte finish. Wi-Fi certified, DivX, Dolby, Energy Star compliant. Side here you have uh, controls, power, menu, input, channel, and volume. Not that you'll ever really need those, but they are there if you need them. This also has inputs on the back for two USB devices, so uh, powered hard drive or flash drives, flash and Finally, sticks. here's an image of the remote control. Very simple remote, lightweight, uh, not a lot of features, but uh, powerful on it. Not a lot of buttons, not a lot of dials, that kind of thing. Good enough. You know, it's, uh, it actually has less buttons than uh, my old TV, and I think that probably just makes it user-friendly, more user-friendly. Yeah, so ha happy enough with the control. Keyboard on the back would have been neat, but uh, you know, as long as it works. But uh, happy with it. Here it is.